today I'm gonna to show you how to make this dripping metal background. First, I'm gonna take you through where you can find all of the exact dimensions you'll need to create wallpapers and lock screens for both Android and Apple devices. From there, we're gonna go straight into the tutorial and then finally, I'm gonna show you all of the adjustment layers that we use to create something that looks like what you're looking at on the screen right now. This is a great abstract background that will work with pretty much anything, typography, photos, websites, whatever you need it for. So let's go ahead and get started. I see this look a lot uh, for you know iPhone backgrounds and those types of things. So I wanted to give you one little tip as far as um, how you could save these in the proper dimensions for phone backgrounds and things like that. So I'm gonna come up to File, New, Sometimes this area right here gets overlooked a little bit so we can come over here to mobile and it's going to give you all of these different sizes that are specific to types of phones uh, or devices that you're using and then you can come in here and it's going to give you all of these different sizes you have for Android, iPad, Retina displays. So if you're interested in something like this as a background for a phone, for wallpapers and things like that, then definitely check this out as well. So before we start, I wanna show you a few different patterns that I made. I did this project a few times before I decided to make a video on it. There's really not any way that you can keep this a uniform look, meaning it's gonna be different every single time you do it. So I wanted to just show you what I did and where I started and what I've been working on. So I'm gonna turn these all off and just show you what I started with here in the beginning and then just, so these are some of the earlier ones and then I started getting into bunching some of this up here. So really, I'm gonna show you the technique but then you can go in and perfect the look that you're going for. But every single time you do this, it's gonna be different. It's gonna have a different look and it's always guaranteed to be custom. I just wanted to show you this quickly before we get started. Now, uh, I'm working here in a 1000 pixel by 1500 pixel document and I'm gonna go ahead and just add a new layer to what we've got going on here. I have some adjustment layers uh, that I was working with here. So I did this one, this is like a darker, moodier look here and, I, and I'm and i gonna use this, something like what I've got going on here for maybe colored. So let's go back in here. I'm gonna change the hue and saturation. So these settings that I have look really nice with these really rich, jewel tone colors here. Or for the gold, I went for something a little bit lighter, uh, which is uh, this, let me turn that one off, which is this group right here, only because I'm going for a lighter yellow gold look for this one. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna add a new layer here, uh, and I'm gonna turn these off actually. I'm gonna put this right under these two adjustment layer settings and I'll show you the settings that I have here in a in a little bit. I just want to go through how to create something like this first and then I'll show you all of the different settings that I used. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your foreground background colors default black and white. If you don't you can just click on this little icon and that will do that for you. From there we're going to come up to filter, render, and clouds. From here we'll go into filter filter gallery and you're going to see something like that actually you probably won't sorry let me back up a little bit uh, inside of the filter gallery we're going to go over to the sketch folder and inside of sketch we're using chrome so the chrome settings for this are going to be detail is zero and our smoothness we're going to bring all the way up to 10 click ok and you're going to have something that looks like this when you get to this point, you can come back up to filter and then liquify. Inside of the liquify panel, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here uh, so I can see the entire image. If you're using a document that's similar to the size that I'm using right here, the 1000 by 1500, these are the settings that I'm using for my brush. I have my brush size at 609 density at zero, pressure 100, 
and I turned off pin edges for this one and I'm just going to come in here and smooth everything out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this but you'll still be able to see the process that I'm going through. Now for this, I'm working with this uh, tool right here, the um, forward warp tool, but I have some areas that I've kind of overdone here. So I want to come in with this uh, bloat tool and just work some of that out. Okay, and once I get them, more or less, uh, I, I still have a lot of areas here that I have overworked, but that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and with the tutorial just to give you an idea of what I did. Uh, but once I have all of that stuff out, I can just kind of come back in and smooth it out a little bit more. And I think I'm going to leave this as it is. This is the design for this one. You and when I turn on all of those filters that I created for this, you can see... It looks like dripping gold. I'm going to take you through the process of creating all of those filters. The very first one we're going to add is a brightness and contrast layer. I'm going to leave my brightness at zero and bring my contrast up to 84. So it's going to be pretty high on the contrast. 83 is fine. Go ahead and leave that there. This is just to get um, into the detail of this and the lights and darks. Go back into the layers and I'm going to add another adjustment layer. This time we're going to work with the curves. So here what I want to do is, is uh, just bring up the brights just a little bit and bring down the dark. So you're going to have somewhat of an S curve here. Again, we're just trying to play on the light and dark of the chrome area here. So we want this to look like shiny metal, liquid metal. So we're just working on those lights and darks. So we'll go back into our layers and I'm going to add another adjustment layer. This time we'll work with vibrance. On the vibrance, I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, the saturation alone. Actually, you know what, we'll bring up the saturation to about 23 is fine. And we'll bring our vibrance up. Uh, this one will bring it to 48. So we're getting something that looks more like chrome and less like a silky texture or something like that. Even though you could adjust these a little bit and create a nice silky texture. What we're going for is liquid metal or gold. Okay, so we're going to add another adjustment layer. This is a hue and saturation layer. This is going to be the last adjustment that we're going to make. We're trying to make gold, so we're going to bring this down. Also, very important for this, make sure that colorize is checked so that we can actually see the color because this is a chrome shiny texture. So we're going to bring this to about 34. I think I'll bring up my saturation just a touch. We'll bring our saturation up to 58 and we'll take our, uh, we'll bring our lightness up just a touch as well, just to about 9 or 10. Um, this is for the lighter yellow gold. Of course, if you want a darker gold, you can uh, make adjustments here to your saturation and lightness. For more Photoshop tutorials, make sure to click on one of the images up on the screen right now. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Visit prettywebs.com for more design resources for your blog and business.